Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at an oldie but a goodie. Andrew Demko releases the first knife under his production knife shingle. We're very excited about that. And our moral betters right here at YouTube punish one of our, our own, the great and powerful Metal Complex. And, and they're getting him for... I don't know. And uh, so we're going to discuss all of those things and more right here tonight. Dave, it's good to have you here, sir. Good to have you as always, this old sword. Chris Bladeogre, how's it going, sir? Wonderful to have you. Michael, the great and powerful. Great to have you here, sir. And Michael, good evening, Bob and Jim. Caleb, how you doing? Howdy, howdy. A man with great taste. Uh, so first thing we do here, as always, is a little uh, pocket check. Let's find out what everyone's carrying. And uh, um, first, let me tell you what I'm carrying, you know, uh, because that's what we're here for, right? We want to show off our knives a little bit, talk a little bit about the subject, take a look at some of the new things coming out, like that Andrew Demko AD 20.5. Very exciting. Um, but uh, let me show you what I had today. In my front right pocket, I had the, um, well, I, I don't want to say ever present, but I have been carrying it a lot since Christmas. So that's almost half a year now. Uh, the uh, Fox made Jason Knight designed tactical elements distributed, at least when I got it, uh, MK Ultra folding kukri. This thing is awesome. It's on bearings. It's got a four plus inch blade and just that beautiful signature uh, shape kukri uh, from Jason Knight with the fuller running the near length of the blade and the black anodized titanium lock bar or lock side. And I just love this knife. It is so slender and yet so kind of large and capable that it, it just fits easily in pocket. And I love it. Why? Well, thank you, sir. I'm sure you're carrying something cool. Can't wait to hear what you have. It demonetized on YouTube. Yeah, man alive. Uh, thank God that we have these pearl clutchers around to tell us what's right and what's good. Uh, I'm sure it's an algorithm because, you know, why actually put real thought into anything when you could just set a computer on it? Um, next, I had something that's been in the, in the waistband quite a bit recently. This is the um, Dirk Pinkerton designed concept made Main Street. Uh, of course, it says mini Main Street or small Main Street on the blade. What is it? Uh, little Main Street on the blade. But this is a great knife. Also very slender. Also extremely capable. This has been, I got to say, probably the knife that's gotten the most use over the last, say, month, month and a half. Uh, this knife has a very sharp blade with great geometry and quite a nice uh, pointy blade there. So... Um, this is great in the waistband as a supplementary blade or as a, you know, I like to, I like to carry a knife in the waistband. It's kind of a, a nice way for me to carry more than one, uh, more than one knife on me and, and, uh, not have it be too obvious that I'm carrying a whole bunch of knives. Steelcraft Bodega. Nice. And the HEA Falcon. The Falcon is a weird looking knife, isn't it? It's got a, a I don't want to say weird. I want to say unusual looking knife, right? That's the one that's the uh, the Tanto, I think. HEA Designs. Interesting, interesting stuff coming out of that, out of them. Hey, Professor EDC, it's great to have you. Bob, Jim, ladies and gents, a pleasure to be here and hope everyone is doing all right. Well, thank you, sir. I hope you're doing all right down there south of the border. Blade Hobby. Hello, fellow knife junkies. Hello, Blade Hobby. How's it going? Been a long time since I caught a live. Well, it's good to have you here. It's good to have you here. We're going to talk about some uh, interesting and important stuff. Christine, how you doing? It's great to have women carry knives here. It's also nice to have some uh, uh, to have a woman here because <laughs> oftentimes I feel like um, I feel like that's maybe a demographic we lack a little bit. Uh, Martin Gamboa, Martin, as always, a pleasure to have you here, sir. Hey, how's it going, Peter? Also, therapeutic edge here. Man, that uh, phew, that um, uh, dire wear. Woo, you're killing me with the dire wear. I love their stuff, but especially, uh, especially the um, oh, and now it escapes me. But that series, that sort of bulbous, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, shape. Um, damn, can't remember what it's called. But Dirk loaned me one, and I loved it. It was hard to send back to him. Gotta say, Giant Mouse Sonoma for a knife. 
Uh, that's a that's that trailing point, I think. Leatherman Pulse for multi-tool and Jetbeam RRT01 for a flashlight. <gasps> flashlight? Don't you mean a torch, sir? Uh, that's Dr. Steven. Doctor, great to have you here. This is the third thing I was carrying today. Uh, this goes by the name of Sleepy Bear. It was given to me by, by my oldest, oldest daughter, Eden, when she was young. And uh, she still names every knife. She'll, she'll pick it up and say, this one's... Um, Angry Hedgehog, and I'm like, no, okay, I, and I can't keep up with all the names, but Sleepy Bear, I remember. Um, she wanted to get me a purple knife, and I said, oh, I know, just the thing. And this knife is just psh, forever great. It's great to have one of these in your pocket. Um, Delica's, this is the only one of these three that I actually used uh, today, um, you know, in a non-gratuitous way. I actually needed a knife and I pulled this one out. Uh, I was around some colleagues. When I got home from work, I, I used this for some, some cooking applications. Totally not the right knife, but it opened up the package well. I tried to cut mushrooms with it and, um, it, you know, it's, it's better for other things. Let's just say that. So today, the Delica, the MK Ultra and the concept. Now, if I'm going to really be a nerd and geek out about this, uh, if I had given it any thought and wasn't rushing out the door this morning, never would I have taken two micarta handled, you know, brown micarta handled blades with, with or uh, handles with blades uh, of black. Just wouldn't have happened. Just thank God I didn't choose two of the same locking mechanisms because I would have been in trouble. It would have been on my uh, my mind, and I'd have to take on the name OCD for EDC in that case because that would have that would have really gotten to me. So what are you all carrying out there? Let me know. And actually, Peter, let me know what that dire wear is called because now, now I'm just going to sit here and kind of kind of go a little stir crazy about it. Um, it's a cool name and it's a simple name, but for some reason, it's just escaping me. Eli, how's it going? Yeah, it's all shit. The hit, oh yeah, hit metal complex. It's just more damn censorship over sensitive wine asses. <laughs> well said, sir. I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I actually could not agree with you more. Um, if it's not some sort of algorithm set for the word knife, um, then it's then it's really kind of depressing. But we're, we're going to get to that shortly. I want to hear what you're all carrying uh, before we go down that road. Hey, Ron, good to have you here. Just got today the Rough Rider Giant Warncliffe. Uh-oh, I don't know about this. Five and three-eighths inch liner lock. You know, I do love giant folders. I, I really do. Um, so that would be that would be good to know about. I need to look that up. And I do love Rough Riders. This old sword says, hey, Dave, uh, carrying a Bastinelli Gecko Flipper. Gecko uh, in gray micarta, titanium handle, tanto blade. Best tech, Strelit by, oh, by Ostop Hell. That's a part of his um, bouquet. All the, all the cool, is that the, is that the push dagger one that just came out? Or is that uh, one, one back? Let me know. Chris was carrying a Boker Plus Lancer in brass. Ooh, I, brass? I don't have any brass knives. I love the idea. I love the idea of how it patinas and, and such, but uh, um, I don't know. Is it is it too heavy? Let me know, Chris. Uh, the CRKT Overland. I love that knife. Smoky Mountain my, Knife Works exclusive. I think that means it's all black. Is that right? With, a, with maybe a green pivot collar and an unnamed Bowie folder. Unnamed Bowie folder. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, Yuri, uh, Yuri Testikoff, nice to have you here, sir. First time listener, long time knife addict. Got my fix today with the wee blackao. Oh, okay. So, uh, blackao, sorry. Uh, Dave, this old sword who was just, uh, who's watching also loves that knife. And actually, I've been meaning to ask him if I could borrow it to check it out. I love this, the Spanish clip point. That profile of that blade is just beautiful. And also, it has a really nice looking handle. I think what turned a lot of people off from that knife was possibly the size. It's a, it's a fairly large knife. But also, um, the back strap uh, back lock is, is kind of... Um, uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's a little odd, I think. Uh, a little different, a little off the beaten path in how it operates. Hey, Ben, great to have you here. Ben Belkin. He, of course, is the proprietor of Jack Wolf Knives. Cannot wait to see those coming out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the one that we saw before, but he's the guy. He's the guy for sure. Can't wait to see those Jack Wolf Knives 
uh, coming out. And can't wait to see one right here in my hand. Can't wait to shake your hand, Ben, at Blade Show. Blade Hobby says, today carried the Mannix 2 with Thai scales and Thai hardware. Nice. And the real steel rocket in S35 VN. That is a cool knife. Also kind of a large-ish knife, right? The real steel rocket, That that's a... Um, isn't that a, a, a um, oh God, this, this happens to me, right? It, it's, it's by Poltergeist Blade Works. Is that right? 28 days till Blade Show, says Caleb. Yes, indeed. I have everything set now. Uh, for a while, I, I had my hotel room, but not my tickets. And I was like, oh, what if it sells out? And then I finally got my tickets. And, and well, I'm, I'm I get my second dose of, uh, government mind control serum next week and so uh, really I, I will take masks with me but wouldn't it just be wonderful if someone who, who had covid and then got inoculated like they suggested could actually go about life without a mask even like like say indoors wouldn't that be fantastic well it's good to know that our handlers are now allowing us not to wear masks outside. We should all really be grateful and rejoiceful about that. Uh, Michael says, Tucson TS224 with M390. Very nice. Man, I don't know which Tucson that is because the number thing just boggles the mind. And the way they produce them, so many different designs boggles the mind also. I just can't remember one model from the next. But I do know that they please the eye, and the four that I had in hand were awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Jared Neve for that. And a Thai CF handle. Oh, okay. And an Imperial Stainless Steel Stockman. Imperial. Oh, okay. Imperial. Gotcha. I was thinking of the old uh, Explorer brand for some reason. I don't have any Imperials, but Stainless Steel Stock. I love Stockman. Hello, David. How's it going? Carrying the Zahn and the PM3 CW today. Now, is it the Zahn uh, clip slash drop point or is it the um, Tanto? I love the Tanto. And I love the handle treatment. And I love the milling in the handle of that knife, but I've never actually had or held one. Professor is carrying an awesome Hogue Ritter RSK Mark 1 G2. Love that thing. Okay, I, I was RSK, got it. Hogue Ritter, got it. Mark 1, got it. G2. Is that, that's not the mini? What is that? Which one is that? The G2, is that the orange one? James, good to have you here, sir. He was, James was showing off a beautiful Shira Gorov uh, the other day. SOCOM Elite Auto. Nice. How you doing, Slicey? Great to have you here. Peter, in the pocket is my Benchmade 808 Loco. You know, that knife came and went like a, oh, I had a, I had a crass, uh, analogy, but uh, it, let's just say it came and went. And I always thought that was really cool with the pistol grip and it had the lozenge shaped uh, flipper hole. Christine was carrying the Alliance Design Demos again today. I know what it looks like, can't pronounce it. How do you pronounce that? Demos. Demos. Um, that's a cool knife. Lindy Lou, great to have you here. Lindy's been doing some cool, cool work as always as does her better half, or maybe her worse half. Uh, Mista, great to have you. Good evening, all. Carried the Brad Southern Toke, Tolk, and the new Kaiser Beglider 2 in M390. Uh, okay, that that knife model has been tempting me year after year, and then they came out with brass, and I was like, ah, maybe. And, and now they have it in M390 with uh, micarta, and it's just a good-looking Good looking blade. I might just have to do it. Got the Deshorn Imvubu here. Oh my God. Uh, marble carbon fiber scales, 3.8 inch, nice nitrobe, nitrobe, nitrobe 77 blade front flipper liner lock. Jeez, oh Pete, man. That is, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that that's the, uh, that that's a, um, a custom there, a, a Deshorn straight from the shop. Yes, the push dagger talon knife. Oh, Dave. Ooh, I want that. Uh, but just desire. Lavender Pants 86. How's it going, sir? How's it going? Forever grateful. And you know why. And probably everyone knows why. And you're going to see it later. G Man W, Spider Co. Capara. Another great knife that I've never had. Uh, that thing, I hear it's great in the kitchen. And ABW Mark I V6. ABW. Uh, elaborate, please. That's, uh, oh wait, American Blade Works. Got you. Sorry. Sorry. I knew I knew that, but it was just, uh, bouncing off my, 
bouncing off my brain like a dime. Hey, dime, how's it going? Dime wide, nickel high. Yo, yo, what up, y'all? It's great to have you here, sir, presumably. John, how's it going? Good evening, tribe. My Benchmade Mini Loco is in my pocket. Okay. All right. So we got a little coinky dink happening here. A, a knife that kind of came and went. Didn't spend too many uh, years on the Benchmade production roster, like two, maybe. And we have two viewers right now carrying it. One a mini and one a large. That's pretty cool. See? See? Just see how... How okay, I'm gonna stop there. Hey Ben, uh bladeless today. What? Oh, never left the house, arm in a sling. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. I can relate. But wife taking me out tomorrow for errands, and I will have my ultra tech. Excellent, excellent. Just in case you better have something automatic and ready to go. Do tell us if you're up to it, what you're wearing in your sling, or not what you're wearing in your sling, but how you got in a sling. And you should have something in there, like a little quaking or something. Lindy Lou, uh, got everybody here tonight. That's right. That's right. We're excited that we're all here to talk. Uh, and also, people, feel free to go to thenifejunkie.com slash join if you want to hop on and say hi in person. Dave's video is why I bought the Blackout. Oh, awesome. I flick it open with no problem. Excellent. I, I think I might have to get that. Or no, no, no. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, I think I might have to get that. The Rokot. Rokot. Okay, thank you. The Rokot is designed by Ivan Braganetz. Okay. All right. I was thinking, um, I was thinking Jacob, uh, whose name I can't pronounce over there. Uh, you know who likes Ivan Braganet Bra Braganetz, or maybe you can tell me how to pronounce that too, is um, uh, uh, Ep Epic Snuggle Bunny had a few of his custom things that were really cool. John Evans, can't wait to see everybody who's at Blade Show. Yes. Yes, me too. Me too, sir. Ethan Ruins EDC. Hello. It's great to have you here. What were you carrying, Ethan? Let us know. So bummed we can't make it to Atlanta this year, but we'll be going to Blade Show West. Excellent. Um, I will not, but uh, um, we do know from last week that uh, Alex will be there, and I'm sure a whole bunch of awesome knife folk will be there because we have a lot of uh, a lot of good good knife people making videos and and uh, living out on the West Coast, California, IA. carrying the Benchmade Mini Presidio Two. Very nice. I like actually. I like that the two better than the original. Hey, monster! Great to have you here, everyone. Please remember to hit that like button and show Bob and Jim your appreciation. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, you know, you know, theoretically, every time we put a video up, and uh, you don't want to miss that. The Boker Lancer in brass is lightweight. The Overland has a red pivot. Unnamed Bowie is because it is the hinderer prototype. I know. <laughs> Bought secondhand that turned out to be from AliExpress. Well, you know what? It's like you said. Uh, the design, you like the design. Obviously, uh, they were ripping off a great design. And now you have one that's, uh, you said it felt really sturdy and stout. And so now you have one that you can thrash on and not feel worried about, you know, that's, that's, that's a good thing. And hopefully the dude that you bought it from, uh, didn't pay, you know, hinder or prices for it because it was a prototype. That's what I was thinking, like prototype of that knife. That means it's like very old and valuable. Uh, if it were real max, how's it going? My office carried today, a custom knife factory, Satori 2.0 integral Peter, uh, Peter Recenti. Mm -mm. I love his designs. Pretty much everything I've ever seen come out of his shop. Oh, you've got the new Tiffany Blue S90V Para 3. That's right. And you painted your fingernails to match. I remember seeing a picture of that. I love that Tiffany Blue color. It also reminds me of, um, of that Bianchi road bike color. What's it called? Celeste, I think. I think uh, Slicey has, has educated me on that. Uh, the mini is a chunky little monkey. I imagine the grown-up is a handful. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about of the the mini loco, huh? Dime wide nickel high says, "Is there really only nine likes?" Well, maybe I'm uh, I'm not a likable guy. What can I say? Uh, I'm liking the new Kaiser Mini Critical in cus in carbon fiber. Carried it today around my home office. So that Kaiser Mini Critical, I have to I have to dig into that. That's a Matthew Christensen design. Uh, the critical they they came out with was full size a while ago, and 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 right they're now bringing it back out, but 
putting it through all these different uh, configurations, right? With different ways of uh, different uh, blade holes and colorways, etc. Jay Powell, good to have you here. Great to be joining you, Bob. Well, great to have you, sir. Let us know what you're carrying. I'm I'm curious and nosy that way. <laughs> we do have to have a knife junkie meetup. Well, um, you know, I'm going to be at Blade Show, so I, and I've never been there. So uh, I really look forward to meeting all of you. And since many of you, uh, I haven't seen your faces, I might not recognize you. Well, I won't recognize you. So please, please meet up. And, uh, you know, if you see me, introduce yourself. And it would be great to, to gather a bunch of people together and hang out. Dave says, hey, Bob, there might be a Blacow in your future for review. That would be awesome. And, and uh, we, could, we could do a little trade, a little swap. I'll, I'll send this over to you. You can send me the Blacow, and uh, we can do it like this. We'll be like, okay, all right, all right. and just kind of do one of those. <laughs> I know you love the Blacow, and you know I love this, and I think maybe we covet one another's, uh, some, some things in one another's collection. So I would love to do a swap. That EDC dude, Chicago 23, says there's a Blade show every day over here in Chicago. <laughs> if it's not a shooting, it's a stabbing. Oh, man. Well, it's a good thing you have those strict gun laws there, because imagine it would, would what it would be like without them, man. It would be utter chaos. Ben says, had lingering pain, so went... Oh, that's right. I remember your... your okay, your pictures. Uh, on Instagram for minor arthroscopic cleanup of my AC joint. Mmm, a cleanup uh, where collarbone meets shoulder blade. He found a full rotator cuff tear. Holy crap, man. So surgery was much bigger than planned. Well, Ben, man, I hope you are on the mend really soon. Uh, you know, this being my first shoulder injury, they're painful. I mean, obviously, uh, that's the nature of uh, being injured, but you you kind of don't realize until you injure something how integral it is in the workings of everything else. John Cran, great to have you. Got the mini buster in my pocket today. Antique bronze. Okay, hang on. Mini buster. Why am I having a block? Don't know. Mini buster. Someone, someone help me. John, help me. Jay Powell says, mini Griptilian today. I have the mini RSK G2 arriving on Saturday. That knife is awesome. It's one of the knives I was like, oh, I should have it on the table. And I left it over in my knife case. But I have the one with the purple uh, G, uh, G Mascus, I think they call it. Looks so nice. It's just layered G10. Purple, gray, black, white, I think. And then as they mill it and, and contour it and make that shape, it starts to look like wood. Oh, it's, it's so nice or Damascus steel. Hey, Mark, good to have you here. Uh, have my QSP worker. That's a cool knife with the quick thumb stud. Uh, so that's one of these things, right? The, the quick brand thumb stud. I think that's a great invention, by the way. Uh, and Rough Rider work. Oh, work knife. The uh, Micarta work knife. Um, that's, a, that's a nice knife. I like that. Uh, also, Tucson Maverick. Cool. I, I don't know what it is, but it's a Tucson, so no doubt it's made awesomely and des and um, designed beautifully. The Wii Mini, bu oh, Buster Snacks, right? Okay, so I knew it was. Um, I I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Snacks or Snacks Mini Buster, Wii Mini Buster, Bob. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Come on, Bob. You know this. <laughs> that Mini Buster is a gorgeous knife. Yeah. Hey, Redacted. Good to have you here. Um, I like the way you put your, your name in brackets. Much better than covering it up with black because then we just wouldn't know what to read. Um, yeah, that uh, I love watching Snex uh, when he is fast, when he's um, uh, immersed in a project, the way he documents his... his um, it's like he's documenting his findings and his progress in such a way that that it's gripping and you just want to see this amazing knife that's going to come out of his efforts uh, at the end the maverick is a fantastic tucson awesome well i'll have to i'll have to look that up so i have my lookup paper here tucson maverick so yeah i'm Oh, yeah. Before we get into that, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Jared Von Otterloo, who has designed knives for, um, man, 
so many greats. Um, Todd Begg, Greg Lightfoot, Chad Nell, um, uh, 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 so many more. Um, JD Vandeventer. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm not going to try and remember them all. He's designed so many, so many outstanding, beautiful designs for some of the top, top folding knife makers. And now he's doing some of his own, trying to learn um, from what he's learned from all of his, his great master um, knife maker friends. He is now building his own um, his own knives in his shop under under sort of the hashtag Jared Otterloo himself, very uh, Van Otterloo, very interesting guy, very funny guy. Uh, he's from out there in Canada. Um, uh, what's the western province that isn't all the way west? God damn, um, he is funny. Oh my god, he said some funny things on the podcast, and then afterward, uh, we were talking. He said a couple of funny things too, man. Uh, but also just a just a brilliant guy who, um, like us, loved knives and decided he he was going to introduce himself to people and show them his designs and just resonated with people and, and uh, you know, his career took off. Lavender Pants. Hey, everybody, lots of awesome people tonight. That's right. Hey, uh, all you awesome people, please do actually hit the like button. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming since you're here now, you probably like what's going on. So, yeah, help me out with that. Uh, Stooley J., Hey, did anyone manage to snag the Buck Knife of the Month Marksman? That looks nice. Is that supposed to look like a uh, Stormtrooper also? Like uh, every white and black knife? I thought it looked I thought it looked really nice, and I like that knife. I've been patiently waiting, awaiting my Snex Vision R sometime this year. So is this, uh, James, is this straight from his, uh, from his shop? I mean, he only makes like, what, very, very, Alberta, thank you. He only makes very, very small, uh, Jason, thank you, appreciate it small batches, like 13 at a time or something like that. Is that, is that the kind of production we're talking about? Let me know. Because if so, I, I think that's very exciting, uh, especially to know someone <laughs> who's getting something like that. Cause that's so, you know, that's, um, that's kind of a work of art, kind of a, definitely a, a work of custom engineering and design. Yeah. So who is going to blade show? Let's pipe up, let me know. And let's figure out uh, between now and then, there's 20 some odd days. I know uh, 28 days. Let's figure out uh, when and where to meet. I I want to meet up with you guys. I want to meet you you all and uh, and shake some hands. Shake some hands. I'm not even gonna have that nasty sanitizer on me. I am so sick of sanitizer um, at work. Every surface, you know, I go. To, I still go to the office every day. Every surface that I touch has been cleaned. 500 times that day and everything is just covered with this sticky residue. I feel like I can't get it off my hands. I'm so done with it. And uh, besides, if we start using too much of this stuff, we're never going to be able to fight off any germs by ourselves ever again. So that's my hot take, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that, that that's considered horrible medical advice and uh, you know, so let it be let it be said that i i am aware redacted says i think buck needs to do a new full run of the marksman i'm sure many would agree with you redacted it's a that's kind of an addictive action on that knife uh with the with the way the hawk lock works yeah yes that is that's the hawk lock buck yes indeed sir come see me at jack wolf not that i should have mentioned that go to jack wolf knives table and and uh meet ben there maybe that's where maybe that's where uh um, well, I don't want to cramp your style, Ben, but, but, uh, you know, we all, we all know Ben, it'd be great to meet up with him, shake his hand and, uh, and on the way over there, maybe we'll bump into one another. He's only planning 32 of them. Okay. That's cool. Not only is it, I've always liked the number 32. I've always liked the number 44. You know, there's something about certain numbers that, that appeal, uh, 817, uh, for some reason. Well, I know what the reason is, but I love it. Um, so he's only making 32 of them and you're going to have one of them, President Merkin Muffley. That is awesome. That is awesome. I cannot wait to see that and to find out what, what the deal is with it. Um, in other words, what, what it's unique selling proposition is, if you will, tier one, great to have you. I still have those, uh, knives and I'm still loving them. Actually, I'm going to be doing some reviews of, of the Jake B creates knives and the sad devil or sad evil knives tomorrow. I love those. I'm going to have both of those guys make something for me in the coming year. 
But actually, Jim, can you go back to to tier one's comment? I just wanted to see what he had to say. Finally made it. What's happening? Okay, <laughs> hey, just hanging out talking, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about Blade Show. We are talking about Blade Show. Who's going? Who's gonna be there? Also, uh, censorship on YouTube of knife channels. Well, chief among them, uh, Metal Complex and his uh, demonetizing. What the hell is up with that? Uh, I heard I saw shaking some babies and 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 cuddling some hands or something like that. That's pretty good. Can't attend Blade Show due to. Shake some babies and kiss some hands. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, that immediately makes me think of the dead zone for some reason. Can't attend Blade Show due to shipping out in June for Navy. I want to go so bad, though. Hey, Ethan, well, thank you for, uh, if, you're, if this is your first time, well, it doesn't matter, first or last or whatever, thank you so much for your service. Uh, I know we all greatly appreciate it. And, uh, well, we're honored to have you here. Uh, just just like all the others that I know have served and and uh, come and join this show. Ethan, here's an assignment for you. While you're out on, on your ship, always have your camera at the ready. I want to see some UFO, I'm sorry, UAPs, you know, some of those uh, diamond-shaped UAPs. Apparently, they're all over the place, and I, I want to I see some legit UFOs on video. Because uh, I don't know, we might be seeing some legit UFOs here uh, with the naked eye. Who knows? Maybe they're prepping us for something. Because uh, things are getting pretty nuts, I think. Things are getting pretty nuts. I feel like the authoritarian boot is just slowly starting to press down. <sighs> but anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Robert, how's it going? Uh, managed to grab a Neon Zero frag pattern from Monkey Edge. Love it. That's a Shiro, right? Shiro Gorov. Neon Zero frag pattern i love that monkey uh monkey edge frag pattern scott scott n says i like seeing buck taking risks uh trying some new designs always while keeping the quality yes uh uh the paradigm is a really cool looking knife to me very simple um you know it it's it's not like super bells and whistles i guess the bells and whistles are the uh is the bolster slide uh actuation thing i think it's a great looking knife and that's 35 very nice uh, all the cool kids are going to blade west man yeah 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 i would love to be going out west i haven't been to the west coast in a number of years and uh i love it out there i swear to god you know i've always been on the east coast or in the midwest and when I go to California, it does seem kind of slightly like another country. And I like that, you know, because I speak the language, sort of. Redacted says, geez, that metal complex news really punched me in the face. No nonsense. Yeah, I know. One of the most pleasant, non-dangerous web. I know. I know. Okay, so that's struck down for nothing. It is outrageous. Now, the first thing that occurred to me was there is a Japanese saying, and I I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it goes something like the nail that stands up the tallest gets beaten down or hammered down the hardest or hammered down first or something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, metal is, 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 uh, you know, very popular and has, uh, had just, uh, crossed the 5,000, I'm sorry, the 50,000, um, uh, subscriber threshold and, I wonder if that triggered something in the algorithm or in the whatever that get, has uh, YouTube going, and uh, and they took a look and the, and and someone's like, oh, oh, knives. Eh. Slicey says I had to decide on Blade Show two months ago due to a stand-up gig with the virus stuff. I chose the gig. Wouldn't have done that today. I'm glad you're starting to to gig again though, because you know it. it Comedy seems to all, all performing arts seem to have taken a huge hit. So I'm I'm uh, Blade Show will be there. So I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you're you're going to be gigging. Though I will miss meeting you in person. Crazy lights pass over my house daily. I have loads of video. Really, we will talk offline, sir. I'm very interested in that stuff, and and I would love to see some some cool uh, video that's not coming from the Sun UK. Uh, knife junkie, you would love New Mexico. <laughs> I, for a number of reasons, I assume. Hey, Azen, good to see you here. My family vacation is the same week as Blade. It was scheduled before they rescheduled. Um, yeah, so uh, so we're we're talking kind of in parallel, Blade Show 
and and censorship. Let me know what you think about both things. Dime says, I feel like it was more of his live numbers. Interesting. Yeah, that could be. Maybe drew some attention. But even so, even so, like, uh, hey, Blade, it's great to see you. I haven't seen you in a little while. Hope it gets overturned as it seems someone classified his channel under firearms on a recent post. That's ridiculous. Even firearms, why should that be, you know? But I, I hear what you're saying, David. I mean, it should, it should, that should not matter. If, you know, they, if they claim they're a public commons, they're a public forum, uh, and yet they, they, they're so tight assed about curating what they allow out, it's kind of like they're an editorial, uh, you know, a venture like a newspaper would be. Uh, and, and if they are, then they would be liable for everything on their channel, like all the Al Qaeda shit and all the, all the stuff that's up that is nasty, like genuinely, legitimately nasty that they don't take down. Um, you know, they'd be on the hook for that stuff too. So can you have it both ways? I guess when you're YouTube, you can. Blade says, sucks how YouTube is messing with Metal Complex. He showed that they hit him with violation of gun policy if I'm not mistaken. They said uh, dangerous, uh, I think, weapons. So I don't know if they were as specific as gun policy. Stooley J says, and Metal Complex said on IG that he was hit for fire. Okay, okay. He's never even done anything related to guns, right? I don't get it. No, not only that, but he, you know, he's very particular, or he's very clear about why he's looking at knives, why he examines knives, why he reviews them, and it has nothing to do with with weapons. Um, they monitor the crap out of live streams. So, okay, um, you know his his show has nothing to do with weapons. It's like uh, it's like he's reviewing wrenches or hammers. They're just more interesting, you know. Uh, please stand by for a clarification. For yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, I'm not I'm not saying that the sky is falling. Uh, but the sky is falling, maybe not here and maybe not necessarily uh, around knives. But I, I look out and I look around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's still bullshit uh, BS as to why he got demonized. It was not not but it was not knives. Interesting. OK, um, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. But I guess maybe it just it just uh, fit into the narrative that's that's being built all around me, or at least how I'm taking it in uh, about about how everything's clamped down and tightened. Uh, Slicey, I know you're old enough to remember when when it was, uh, you know, I might not agree with what you say, but I'll die for uh, your right to say it. It's not like that anymore. And to me, that's really uh, upsetting. Therapeutic Edge says demonized is not canceled or muted. The difference is important. Interesting. Lay out uh, what, what the difference is so that I know exactly what you mean. Oh, I'm sorry. Demonetized. I, I'm sorry. I've been saying demonized because in my mind, that's what it feels like. Um, but demonetized is not the same as canceled or muted. You're right. He's going to keep posting. Actually, I, I invited him onto the show tonight and he's uh, driving. Well, uh, he couldn't make it tonight, so. Uh, but it would have been interesting to get his take, and it probably would have been a uh, a way to to calm nerves, a and b. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, assuage any feelings you might have, or or, or, or just quiet the rant. Um, it's such BS that YouTube can decide who makes money and who can't. Well, yeah, I I, I agree. I, I partially agree with that. I mean, it is their business, but um, yeah. Yeah, I just don't, I don't like to see someone so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I guess we uh, we get incensed, we get indignant for our friends and, uh, and uh, yeah, he feels like a friend because I watch him a lot, just like I watch many of you a lot. And once you watch something over and over, oh, oh we'll keep this, comment up for a second because I'm going to read this. But once you watch someone over and over, you start to feel close to them. You start to feel like you know them a little bit. And um, you kind of can suss out their character somewhat. I mean, you know, how much do we know about about anyone? Um, that can be hard to tell, especially when you don't really, when you're only seeing the face that they show you. But I kind of just feel like, uh, like um, well, it was alarming to me because he seems like such a cool guy and such a nice guy and just like kind of the wrong, like 
person to do that to. The whole firearm issue is the reason Cutlery Lover stopped doing gun stuff on his channel. It's a shame. I love Cutlery Lover. Uh, he's he he's uh, he's a really cool guy. I've been watching him for so long. The frustration in dealing with big social media is that it sets a dangerous precedent that we can be censored, but without recourse or communication with the accusers. Basically, fa faceless net nannies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we become, you know, and people say, yeah, it's it's their it's their channel. You have a, a right to, you don't have a necessary a necessarily a right to, to their service. And 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 I I agree with that. That is true. But at the same time, we all play in YouTube's house. They can ask us to leave anytime they want. No such thing as free speech on a privately owned platform. Yes, I agree with you there. But. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like they get to, well, yes, it's exactly what you're saying. They get to make the rules. Uh, but sometimes they play by rules that, that seem more like a newspaper. Like they can, they can dictate, uh, what, what goes out, what you can talk about and what you can't talk about. Um, and at the same time, like that, that makes it seem like, well, they'd be, they should be liable for a lot of the stuff that gets said on their platform. Um, but they get to pick and choose. I, I know, I know it's their place, it's their house, it's their rules. But uh, you know, do do newspapers get to get to go by that? Um, maybe newspapers aren't the uh, aren't the correct uh, analogy. But to me, it seems like when you're when you're when you're a platform like Bell Telephone, or you're you're just allowing people to use the lines and they can say whatever they want over the over the phone line, or are you? someone who's choosing what gets said. I don't know. Uh, I, I think ultimately uh, you're right, Brian. Uh, Metal Complex shared another video about it on Patreon with a little more info, but still nothing definitive and still vague answers from YouTube pointing to guidelines he didn't break. Yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess, I guess the common thread here is, uh, you know, though it's tempting to, Uh, have a knee-jerk reaction, uh, especially because it's someone that you you feel like you know and that you feel close to. Uh, you don't like seeing it happen. Also, there's like, well, I have a channel and I like knives and I like watching these channels and I don't want to see all these channels I like, uh, you know, suffer because a lot of them use that money, you know, the the ad revenue, which isn't which isn't high, but when the higher your numbers are, the higher your ad revenue. Those allow those channels to keep existing and keep bringing new content and we don't want to see that go away either so a lot of it is selfish no doubt um but yeah ultimately uh you know go make your own youtube okay sure you know when they <laughs> they have 98 percent of the market share scott says it could also be an advertiser's concern of association with mental complex it's about the advertising. That's an interesting thought. Uh, maybe the soap companies or Ford Motor Company or whoever, um, you know, they don't like what what the ad is going on. Uh, that that's a possibility. Uh, MC has figured out a lot more since the videos. I'm sure he'll post something tomorrow. It's still BS and not his fault, but will make more sense. Yes, yes, calmer heads will prevail. And uh, and we'll find out what the what the real story is. He put something up, I think, today or was that yesterday? And I'm sure he's learned a lot more since then. And um, yeah, I've been concerned about topics like this for a long time, but uh, it's never hit as close to home. I guess I'd, I should say uh, there's a lot of misconception on what weapons are. Even uh, even Stripe classified my knife as a weapon. Took a few weeks to clear up. What's Stripe? Curious. Uh, and, and your weapon being the, o I mean, I'm not your knife being the Orion, uh, which is such an EDC knife. So great. Of course you could use it as a weapon and, and, uh, you know, but, uh, you could use this, this pencil, you could use this pencil as a weapon. Uh, Ben says there's no denying the corporate oligarchy is running the new town square, AKA privately owned social media platforms. Indeed. Indeed. Yuri says, maybe the knife companies who've made literal millions off of work of five to eight knife podcasts should open their mouths in support of these guys instead of one free knife a year. <laughs> well, 
you know, maybe, maybe depending on, on how it all comes down, I, th I think, uh, I think, uh, I think ultimately Brian, uh, Brian brings a good point up, which is, uh, you know, wait and see a little bit, you know, uh, part, part of what I'm railing against is how people jump all over, uh, news stories without actually waiting and seeing what the facts are and they jump to conclusions. And, uh, maybe I've done a bit of that. Uh, Stripe is a credit card processing company. Interesting. We want nothing to do with that. We want nothing to do with such a thing. It's not a weapon. Okay, we'll we'll take your money. Martin says both eBay and Amazon sell knives of all types, including the more tactical or self-defense types. I don't understand how top tech companies can sell these, yet others treat it as inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, because they also sell these kitchen knives, which I'm so fond of. I love these kitchen knives. Scott N., uh, one thing I've found in the knife community, I'm sorry, one thing I've found is the knife community has some genuine and wholesome content. It does. It does. I mean, it's just people talking about their passions, you know, and uh, a lot of it has to do with the creative nature of it. Uh, you have a lot of people, um, well, like David, who designs a knife and has a knife made. You have people like Lindy who takes knives that already exist and creates the, you know, creates brand new things out of them. Um, you know, you have, I think you have a lot of, uh, you have Ben Belkin who's starting his own company, taking something traditional and turning it into something new and modern. I mean, there's a lot of creativity involved in, and well, I think people get protective of their creations, you know, uh, and also the, the creative work that they like and admire. Professor says, my good friend, Bob, the world we knew is no longer the world we as we knew it no longer is. Sorry about that. Uh, difficult as it may seem, not only the economic systems have been rebooted, uh, but all as well. The thing is to be alert and support the community. Yeah, it's true. It is. It is like that. Um, yeah, when I said uh, when I said that thing before, I, I just remember, you know, uh, when I was in college, it was a it was a real big thing to be like, yeah, man, I disagree with what you say, but I'll I'll die for your right to say it. That I love that. That was like a very um, liberating thing to think because you don't, you know, it it also takes a lot of weight off of your own shoulders. You don't have to agree with everyone to get along with everyone. Now it kind of feels like, yeah. Uh, you kind of have to yeah toe a line or agree with everyone or, or or agree with the main with the main through line of of what you're being told to to get along um anyway not not very well said but i think you know what i mean um i just hope that people don't uh really the the, the one reason i wanted to bring this up is that uh, i hope it doesn't have a chilling effect i hope people don't stop doing what they're doing i know uh, metal's not going to stop doing what he's doing um i I, I certainly am not. I can't imagine any of you who are, are so passionate about knives will. Uh, Blade, uh, hey, Mike, how's it going, sir? Uh, Blade Banter, you were the buyer or seller on on the Stripe transaction. Pretty sure he's talking about uh, being the seller, but but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll, I'll let I'll let he I'll let David answer that. Mm. So yeah, don't don't stop what you're doing. But who knows? Maybe there are uh, alternatives in the future. I got to go work out. Have a great night, y'all. Christine, great to have you here. Have a great workout. Be safe, uh, especially with your shoulders. Uh, look at the comments under the knife video and then look at the comments under a political video and it's clear where the violence is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's probably true. I try not to watch political videos though. Monster says, times have changed and not for the better, unfortunately. Yeah, some things are, hey, hey, lot less people starving in the world. That's good. Um, people live longer. That's good. Uh, there's less war in general. That's good. Like, like back in the day, you could be down by the river doing your laundry and who knows a Mongol comes up and chops your head off, like just like that. Uh, so some things have gotten better. I, I think it's important to remember that it's easy to get doomy and gloomy. Uh, believe you me, I, I do often, uh, uh riding in the car, uh, uh, and seeing how people behave when they're behind the wheel gets me doomy and gloomy. Hey, James, great to have you here. So, uh, but it is good to remember that it has never been better, actually. I mean, some things have been better, but just in terms of like our general quality of life has never been better. 
maybe you disagree, but I, I kind of think that that's, that's how it is. Hey, Hawaii knife uh, and gear. It's great to have you here and to think about Hawaii for a moment instead of DC, <laughs> uh, which is where we be. Therapeutic Edge says, we're off together. Have a wonderful night. Peter, take care and uh, have a great workout. Losing my PayPal would hurt me a lot more than being demonetized by YouTube. Yes. Yes, that is interesting. I've had that thought from time to time, you know, um, because I, I do a lot of transacting there. And uh, I know you you, you got to be careful everywhere. You know, you um, it's just like we talk about uh, being at the office with knives. Well, there is what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. And then there is what is kind of like, you just got to be smart about things. It's the same thing with PayPal when you're buying something. Uh, instead of buy, instead of buying, you know, instead of listing, well, you, you get the idea. And I agree, like uh, PayPal is kind of an essential service. Ben says, going to bow out folks, dinner and rest for me. We'll hit the join link next week. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. Come on and uh and and let us know how your shoulder's doing. Hop on tonight with Bob. Don't be shy. Ben, we will see you at Blade Show if we don't see you here next week. Don't you be shy. Go to 16 booth 16. It's one of the 16s. Hinderer Knife Collector. Great to have you here, sir. Uh, I saw you were on uh um uh Everyday City Carries podcast and the still was funny. You're just boom with your hinderer with a hinderer i was like there he is sky warp that's 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 the man we know and love blade hobby says i deal with that stigma of having a weapon with my own family because i always have multiple knives they don't seem uh they don't seem it, they don't see it as a passion of mine well you know everything takes a little bit of time especially something that uh that's unusual so people might uh might indeed start start seeing seeing it as a passion and seeing how they could integrate it into their own lives. Tier one, I read about a channel getting axed over the affiliate programs because it promoted the sale of weapons. Oh my gosh. Just just let's let's not be so granular, people. You know, everything everything can be a weapon. I'm not talking I'm not talking about you tier one, obviously. I'm talking about people who are like, oh, let's let's look at the affiliate links. Alex, how's it going, sir? Great to have you. We've been we've been going off about uh, about issues of censorship and such, and um, we have some calm heads, and then we have me sitting here going off at the mouth. But uh, it is concerning to me, and I think it's concerning to a lot of people. Crazy knife freak, aka Peter B. Hey, hey, Bob. I hope you, you and the family are doing well. We are indeed. I hope you and your family are doing well, sir. We are happy and healthy, and and. That's that's what counts the most. I just really hate to hear about things like that, especially when people put so much time and effort into their work, no doubt. And and speaking of people who put time and effort into their work, I'm going to jump ahead past this, past uh, Knife Life News, because I want to show you this, and it will come, it it will circle back, as a as someone I'm very fond of says, uh, to one of the Life Knife News stories. So uh, it goes like this. This knife, the 8020, okay, Lavender Pants hit me to this at River's Edge Cutlery. They got a batch of six. He sent me a photograph. None had been sold at that moment, which was just moments after they were put in the case. So I had my pick of the litter. And I've always wanted one without the hole. And I love this sort of red maroon color. Uh, as you can see, I had it put on my custom anomaly. I just love that burgundy color. Uh, so this uh, really caught my eye, of course, and, and I've been wanting one of these for a long time. And so I jumped on it again. Um, very grateful to Lavender for this. Uh, he he uh, he hooked it up. I paid him back and boom, it was mine. And it was here quickly. And uh, you saw that I put a video up of it and I will, I will do a full on video comparing it to knives like, oh, say the... 8015. This, of course, is the cold steel version. Uh, I know Alex has a real, uh, I shouldn't say a real, but a, a Demco 8020 and or 8015. Uh, that is beautiful. Blue and all customed out as uh, Alex does it. And compare it to the 8010. 
uh, I actually didn't, I wanted this knife, but I did not know I was going to like that. It was going to skyrocket to the top of almost all of my knives, a and B of the, of the Andrew Demko designs. I mean, this thing is so amazing. And this action from the shark lock is incredible. Now I know I'm a year late, uh, but he, you know, <laughs> and actually Slicey just had him on his show. And I, uh, I have yet to listen to that, uh, but I'm sure that they were talking about the 80, 20.5. Am I right, Brian, if you're still there? Um, which is his, uh, which is the, the first production Taiwanese, uh, Taiwan made, um, knife under the Demco, um, uh, label. And, uh, it looks a lot like this, except in a three inch version. And it comes in a worn cliff and a clip point like this in that, uh, gray GRN with that same beautiful shark lock action. It's just such an amazing thing. And the sound. So does everyone love how this sounds? I know, like I said, uh, I'm talking about old news here, but I'm, I'm still so extremely excited about this knife. It just sounds so great. Does anyone agree? Does anyone out there think that this knife is uh, not only a great user? I mean, this thing is incredibly sharp. That's a fat blade but they bring it down to such a screaming sharp edge. Great user, very comfortable. Uh, whether you're in saber grip like this and using the shark lock as a thumb ramp, or whether you're, you're up here on the um, up, up here on the jimping, it's so comfortable. Monster says the, the 20.5 looks great. It does look great. I love the gray GRN. I think it's awesome. I need one, says Alex. Which one? One of these, I think you need one of these, man. Maybe an all titanium. I ah, love this thing. Sean T says the 8020 looks awesome. I agree. I could not agree. I could not agree more. Blade Hobby says, I dream of owning the 8020. Great score. Yeah, it took me long enough, uh, but thank you, Blade. I I, uh, I appreciate that. I was very psyched, and it wouldn't have happened without. Uh, without uh, our awesome viewers. Uh, Dime says, yeah, the things I do for a damn, <laughs> for a damn stud AD 20. Now, uh, the AD 20.5 is three inches. Actually, Jim, can you, uh, can you roll in the, uh, shot of the, the web, um, the web page I sent you? Let's let's take a look at that thing because it it it's kind of a dead ringer, right? I think it looks exactly the same. It's got a cool little um, shield on the side that says I, I'm not sure what it says. It says Demco probably, but uh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. How cool is that? Now you get a little bit of difference right here in the uh, bird's beak at the end of the pommel. It's a little less severe, a little less hooky, right? And uh, that's kind of uh, reminiscent of how they changed the pommel area of the um, Spartan Harzy folder for the 3.25 inch version, um, because you can't you can't be too hemmed in back there with a with a much shorter handle. Uh, one could presume that the handle is about a bit shorter because the blade is a bit shorter. Um, so you wanna you wanna make that a little less tight in there. Sean T says, I can't wait for the, the 20.5. Hope it's more available than the 20. Well, I think that's the, that's the whole point. Actually. I think that is a, a huge part of the, why he did this. Uh, the 80, 20 is so extremely popular and you know, they just, they just fly out the door as soon as they're made. And, uh, his relationship with cold steel is, is, you know, that's a thing of the past at this point with the GSM sale. I'm getting the new ADV Javelin. Oh my God, Peter, that is a cool looking blade. That is a really cool looking blade. Really looking forward to the 20.5. Um, yeah, me too. So that's an OS 10. Uh, the 20.5 is a three inch blade. It's shorter and thinner. Uh, Slicey, do you have one of those? Um, I'd be interested to find out. Uh, it's, it's GRN, right? And it's made in Taiwan. So uh, Taiwanese made knives uh, tend to be really awesome. At least uh, if Spyderco, uh, Spyderco's Taiwanese made knives are an indication. And uh, yeah, I think the whole point was uh, to have these 
production knives so that he could get them into more hands because uh, the 8020s are just damn hard to get. And it's exciting to see uh, what he's going to be doing after Cold Steel. I got to say, uh, of, of all the designers, I of all the knives I have, Andrew Demko is the designer most prevalent in my collection because I have so damn many uh, cold steels. And uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. You still get the Demko knives around the pivot, uh, but it's a different, you know, it's a it's a less, customi less customized pivot, I guess you could say. Less fancy. And, uh, but I like that they put that there, Demko knives. And then um, also, if... If anyone has one of these yet, I know a couple of review samples have gone out. Um, what does the little shield on the handle say? There's an embossed shield or a raised shield, actually, on the handle of the 82.20.5. And I couldn't tell if it said shark, like shark lock, or if it said Demco. There was a kind of a close-up shot of it, but it was illegible to me uh, in the picture that I was looking at. So this is my one new knife of, yeah, what does that say? This is my uh, one new knife of the week, and um, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to have been available, to have been able to uh, get it, afford it, and all that. And uh, so I, I'm going to, this is, this is uh, definitely a top, top shelf knife in my collection for sure. Something interesting from the James brand. Got to go to sleep. Sean, great to have you, sir. Just wanted to stop by and say hello. Have a good night, everybody. Happy Friday tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Happy Friday, indeed. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait for the weekend. This has been a hard one, hard week. Uh, James Brand, the, the knife that I frequently call a hipster knife or a hipster brand. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Well, they have something coming out that genuinely piques my interest. They've had uh, they've had a few here and there, uh, slip joints that I've really liked, but look at that. That is simple. That is beautiful. That is an integral uh, titanium handle, and that is a three and a half inch M390 blade. There's, I really, really like the look of this. Um, what the hell is it called? The Barnes, the B-R, the B-A-R-N-E-S, um, named after my high school biology teacher, I think. Mr. Barnes. Uh, really, really nice looking, beautifully milled handle there. And uh, if you if you go down a little bit on the um, on this article, you'll see uh, the the tail end. Yeah, it is cool looking. It is. It's I mean, to me, it's kind of a classic looking already. Yeah, very clean. And, and it just feels like. I don't know. Uh, it seems like it has longer legs than anything else they've put out. Not that you know, everything that they put out is clean and, um, you know, simple looking and, um, but this something about this seems like it, it could go far. Um, look at that. Okay. Now I love this view of it. Not necessarily wild about the, the, uh, the lanyard on it, but I like the lanyard. I like how they figure that out. Um, it looks like an Inkosi. He said, uh, says, Daddy DC Dude Chicago 23. Uh, mm, I'm not seeing that necessarily. Yes, uh, that James is pretty great. So glad they put some green on it <laughs> so that I'm not tempted. <laughs> uh, well, they have a black version of it, black handle, and I think the thumb stud is blue. Um, so did they always run the green accents? Uh, see, uh, the article actually states that the blacked version oh my god that's six six hundred bucks Woo! all right well send me three please very clean lines uh the black version has a uh, different color thumb stud can't remember what it is but um it is an integral so you're gonna pay more for it for sure and i think it's american made i think it's american made um, but oh God, I, I could really, really get one of these and, and enjoy it kind of, uh, to me, um, uh, hope this doesn't bother anyone, but if it does, you'll make it, uh, it, kind of in line with something like this, a Sabenza, it's kind of got that very clean. I mean, this by comparison looks, uh, you know, looks complex with the inlays and such, but 
just clean, simple lines, and and I really like that. And I'm 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 happy to have a James Brand knife that I'm not kind of dishing about. And and you know I don't I guess because I lived in New York City for a long time, and it's easy to dish on hipsters. Um, it's low hanging fruit, I guess. And and I always thought that 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 was kind of their market or their demographic, but. Uh, I've had to eat my words plenty of times in the last couple of years because they just keep coming out with cool stuff. But this is really awesome. Uh, yes, I also need a review sample. Yes, please, please send me a send me a dozen. I'll have a dozen. Uh, and when I get that dozen, Peter, I'll send you three of them. For six hundred bucks, does it come with a fedora? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a James Brand knife, right? It comes with a fedora and a and a um, and a, a French bulldog. Uh, Riot makes it a Riot made integral for 600. Isn't that insane? Yeah, Riot does make it. Okay. Well, Riot makes awesome knives. Awesome, awesome knives. And I guess, uh, I guess the price of production is high and then comes through James Brand. I, for some reason, I was thinking for that price, like someone at James Brand is there with a, with a piece of titanium and a little chisel and they're like, and then finally, like after a month, they're like, we have another one, sir. And then they make another one for 600 bucks. Uh, Mr. Beyond the Beard says they also have a Thai green micarta version. Really? Hmm. I hate micarta. Wait, 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 wait. How can I have micarta? This is an integral, sir. Oh, 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 I get the, 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 it's like an inlay. That's cool. I'm having a little conversation with myself, I guess. Um, but that's that is certainly cool. So Riot, you say? Well, I love Riot, and I'm sure it will be an amazing knife. But yeah, six hundred bucks seems a little steep. A little steep. Uh, might might be might be interesting to compete with a knife like the like like the Sabenza uh, in the four fifty range. That kind of seems a little more reasonable to me. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I love this knife. Any excuse to pull it out because I don't carry it that much. Another one that I almost carried today that I, I didn't is, is the VSEP. What a great knife, man. Uh, Les George's knives are just so nice. I love, I love the way they look. I love his designs, the SBR, the rock eye automatic. And then this one, I think I could say genuinely, he's, he's one of those uh, makers that I would just really love to have a, uh, a full custom from, especially if it has knuckle dusters and a dagger blade. I love his 1918 trench knives. They're so damn cool. Uh, so uh, James Brand, interesting stuff coming from them. 80-20, I, went, I, I, I showed you that. Here's an oldie but goodie, and I want to know what you think of it and if you remember this knife. It kind of came and went. Uh, a lot of knives are getting more expensive than Chris Reeve. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, that's not necessarily the benchmark, but it was kind of one of my first expensive knives. You guys remember this? The Combative Edge M1? I was just kind of going through my drawer, and I, I saw this, and I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't carried this in a while. This is a really great knife. You know you've got a problem when $450 is reasonable for a knife. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you know. You've got that problem, Peter. I know you've got that problem. Um, you guys remember this knife? I mean, Combative Edge is still around. They make a, they make some, some. I think they just came out with another automatic version of this. But this was this in the in their original sort of batch. I think this was made by Lion Steel in Italy, and it was made before flippers were expected to do more than this. <laughs> Look at this. It's like. You know how some knives are are impossible not to flip. Um, I don't necessarily have any. Oh, like like this. Like it's very hard to get this not to flip. You know the ZT four fifty two. It's just you know it's a flipping machine meant for flipping, uh, but this um, is not. It's meant for other stuff. Uh, and I remember when Jim Skelton did a video on this. Um, he didn't. He didn't mention that um it's it's not only hard to flip 
but it's also hard to just slow roll out. It's like nearly impossible. You need to sort of give the, like a flipper assist and push it in to roll it out. And uh, he kind of glazed over that. And this was a $200 knife, I think, when I got it. And that was, you know, uh, a lot of money. It still is a lot of money. But uh, I remember when I got it, um, well, I was very happy with it. And, and I've never sold it. And I, I really do like it. Um, but uh, yeah, by today's standards, this is actually an old knife because it's it doesn't do much in terms of action well. It it doesn't it doesn't thumb flip out very well without wrist. It definitely does not flip well without wrist. You need the wrist, and uh, to slow roll it, you need to give it that little assist down here on the flipper. But still, yes, I remember them because it was the worst flipping action. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at the time, I feel like at the time it was like. It was a uh, detent release tab. <laughs> At the time, it was kind of, uh, you know, we weren't as spastic about, about the flipping action. It was, uh, it was more of a finger guard. Um, but I still love this knife, and, um, you know, I think this will probably always be in my collection. It's big but thin. The, the one thing that just always sticks in my craw, though, is this uh, epically long pocket clip. I mean, that pocket clip, boy. That's just a big ass pocket clip. Look at it compared to the big Drago tack. It's the same, possibly the very same clip. Well, it's close to the same clip. This is a giant knife. This is relatively large, but compared to this, you know, that clip is just ridiculous. Anyway, it's an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, do you guys have any oldies, but goodies? Do you ever sell anything, Bob? You would be proud. I sold three knives this past week, three knives to, uh, to, to justify this to myself. Uh, I sold, uh, I sold a Hogue Ritter RSK Mark one, cause I already had another one. Uh, and I sold, uh, um, a malware and I sold, uh, um, oh, my ZT0055 Gus Ciccini airborne, uh, which I've put up for sale like a hundred times and it never sold. And then this time it was the first thing to sell. Are you proud? I'm actually even thinking of uh, selling my um, my M4 Yojimbo uh, exclusive uh, from Blade HQ because I have a Yojumbo, uh, which really captures my heart. And I also have a, 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 a 20 CV Yojimbo and I treat the m4 with kid gloves and i bought it because i'm like oh i love using m4 but i just can't bring myself to use it so i'm considering selling it and i have someone excuse me in mind to sell it uh, too if they agree on the price and um uh, so um he has expressed interest to me and i have yet to respond because i'm like eh, maybe i'll keep it maybe but i think brian this is this is me telling you i think i'm gonna sell it I think I'm going to sell it. I actually just bought some <laughs> something from uh, Levon uh, of uh, the Knife Nuts podcast. He's he's been doing a bit of importing, and uh, let's see, he had the the one uh, real steel in red, um, the Rokot that Dave was talking about. Before uh, he was importing some of those uh, special with red micarta, and then he's been importing two of these uh, knives from. Uh, a Russian company called Crystal. Um, hey, Black Multicam, good to see your face. Sold a Benchmade Morpho Bally, about the only knife I could bring myself to sell. Hey, man, I know, I know. But once you sell, it actually feels good. Yes, Bob, very proud of you, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, so I bought one of these knives from him. It was last Saturday morning. I woke up and I looked at my phone and I went to Instagram and there is this really cool knife he's flipping. And, you know, what's new? Because uh, he, he he has all the knives. <laughs> he has all the knives, cool or not. And uh, he, he happened to be flipping this. And he's like, I'm selling this. Uh, you know, check it out. And I just, man, something about the blade. It's, 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 a, it's a spear point blade, but it's got these two giant fullers, almost the, almost the full size of the, of the profile of the blade in both sides. And it just... Oh, just drew me to it. And um, so 
I, I tried not to think too much about it and I, I, I just went for it and uh, it was actually, you know, reasonably priced. More, let me put it this way, more reasonable than a Semenza. How about that? Uh, like by half. Soldier Malware, sack religion. <laughs> Sorry, but that was hard to read. <sighs> had to do it. I had to do it. It was one of those things, you know, I'm afraid to carry it because I'm afraid to break the tip. Uh, I will never sell any of my knives. It would hurt their feelings. Showstopper, I I understand. <laughs> I do. I do. Showstopper uh, uh, was the winning bidder on the Ryu last week, and apparently he loves it. So I guess he's not selling that either. Hey, Rusty. Great to have you here, sir. Talking about selling knives. I almost bought one of those crystals also. I'm sure I will eventually. Now, uh, there were two of them. Uh, did you see the second one? Do you know which one I'm talking about with the giant fullers on both sides? Oh my God, beautiful. Um, so I can't wait for that thing to show up. Hopefully it doesn't have to come from Russia. Hopefully it's just coming from Pennsylvania, but um, we'll see about that. Yeah, check out uh, Instagram as Jim has put up here, theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram. Uh, I've been posting audiograms of the interview podcast there uh, for quite a while, but only recently have I... Have I got a, a bee in my bonnet to put some some knife pictures up, and it's been fun. And actually, I uh, I've had a couple of mornings where uh, I chose my knife because I thought I might take pictures of them on that day. Um, do you do that? Do you find that embarrassing? Are you willing to admit that, or is that just yeah? Of course, of course, that's what you did. It's Tuesday. You bring a tanto because that's because you know. Um, so anyway. That's uh, that's what happened. I thought I might take a picture of this little setup today, this and this, because I thought, what a nice contrast. Uh, and then it just didn't happen because I had to go shoot in a jail today, man. I don't. I, that's a um, it's a place that uh, it's it's not even that nice to visit. So definitely wouldn't wouldn't want to live there. Uh, Blade Hobby says I'm about to do the same thing, Bob. I really want to hinder XM18 but would have to see a few knives, uh, sell a few knives, presumably, uh, to fund it. It's my current grail. Very much worth it, uh, Blade Hobby. That was actually, the, I think, the first knife that I ended up selling. Yes, it was. It was, I wanted a, an XM18, and I really wanted a Hinderer XM18, and I was looking at my ZT collection, and I'm like, that one was designed by Rick Hinderer, and that one was designed by Rick Hinderer, and that one was designed by Rick Hinderer, and I bet if I sold all three of those, I could afford a Rick Hinderer, so that's what I did. I sold three Rick Hinderer designed ZTs and got a, a Hinderer. I like the one without the Fullers because I'm, <laughs> I'm boring. <laughs> those Fullers are just too exciting. I can't quite <laughs> the others yeah the the first one has really excitingly milled handles so i don't know you might have to be careful about that uh but maybe if it's gripped in your hand and you can't see the handle you'll be able to kind of get by that scott says click the light button or your knives will dull prematurely i like that yes that's right click the light button or your knives will dull or you'll you'll do something like this Uh, I chose my knives almost solely on Instagram potential. <laughs> nice, nice. Choose my knives solely on Instagram potential. This one I think would get lots of likes. I don't care what it's like. But I choose my watches on if they match my knife even. Hey, you know, you've been doing a lot of those photographs. This, this photograph. And I love them. I love them because... Uh, <laughs> it's obvious because some some people take the hand dump photos and they turn their watch around and uh and you know i always wonder does he really wear his watch that way uh some watches i, I used to i used to have a swatch watch and i always used to turn it in um because i don't know why I don't know why I turned that one in, but I've turned like field watches and smaller, thinner watches. I've, I've turned in if I've, if I, when I was a waiter, I would do that. Cause you know, your watch bangs into a lot of stuff. Um, but you'll see these giant panerais or, or, um, you know, beautiful omegas or, uh, you know, substantially sized watches, but guys will turn them around so that they can take a picture of their hand dump and feature their, their 
watch. And that's all fine and good. I'm not saying that everything has to be 100% authentic, but I always kind of wonder that always crosses my mind. Are they an inside wrist? Are they a, uh, you know, inner wrist wearing watch guy, or is this just for the picture? So I like how you just put the damn knife on the back of your hand. We all know you don't carry your knives or use your knives on the back of your hand. We know what you're doing. You're showing your knife with your watch because there's a um, harmony. And I like that. Black Multicam says, I thought I was the only one that matched watch to knife. No, sir. We are full of gentlemen here. We have gentlemen and ladies all around us who do the same thing. Caleb says, I only turn my watches for pictures. See, okay, all right, now I know. Um, but have you ever have you ever done it with a smaller, lighter watch? Assuming that, assuming that your watches are kind of bigger and I don't know. I've been I've been having the watch itch recently and could have to do with all you you guys. I'll use I almost said all all, all use guys. All all of you guys showing your watches. Um but when I do that, I when I start feeling that way, I kind of start feeling like, well, there are more knives to buy, and you you've got you've got you know a few watches that you're happy with, and and uh, you know. But someday, someday, we are refined gentlemen. Yes, you and Black Multicam are refined gentlemen, and I I you know it is the company you keep. John says, "Have you ever dropped a knife onto your foot meat?" while attempting a pick <laughs> it sucks large uh not on my foot meat but i dropped a um uh an emerson that has it's called the sark it's got a hook shaped blade like a um a hawk bill and i was just messing with it and i dropped it in it and it was almost locked open and it buried itself in the side of my calf like this and then the handle went Mm, like this and <laughs> it just created a yawning wound in my calf that just gushed blood uh, and that sucked done that professor ed say, C says got to turn in my friends it's been a long day hope everyone has a wonderful weekend take care and don't forget bladeosophy on sunday godspeed uh before you go professor let us know what time is blade uh bladeosophy on sunday uh uh Tell us in Eastern Standard or whatever time zone. Let us know so uh, everyone knows when to tune in. So, so so far, I have not dropped one knife doing that. Damn it. Now I will. Ah, Well, keep your feet out of the way or wear steel toes or do it over like a couch or something. Uh, don't, don't do it over a, uh, over a basement floor like I've done. Durdoy Durdoy says, what is the Cold Steel 8010? Only 110 on Amazon. Oh, why is the Cold Steel 8010? Only 110 on Amazon. Uh, that's what I paid for this first generation 8010 um, two years ago. Uh, and then it spiked in price for a while. And then it came back down. I think the 8015 is still much more expensive. I think um, maybe just due to more engineering. This is kind of a platform that Cold Steel is used to producing, what with the triad lock. And, you know, it's just kind of an upscale version of some of the stuff they do uh, with the contoured handle and such. But uh, this is more expensive uh, for sure. So I don't know. I guess prices and demand might be coming down a little bit, what with the 8020 and the 8015 and, and the fact that they make the 15 now in the... Um, in the polymer instead of the G10 uh, in the grivery. So all of that might have something to do with it, uh, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, 8010 is 190 on Blade HQ and fluctuates a bit on Amazon. Definitely buy it now. So I was uh, lucky enough to get the hollow ground version of it. Um, they don't really do hollow ground anymore on, on this knife. And I always, uh, this was also first generation AD15, and this came in the flat grind. And I always kind of wish they they did uh, this in the in the hollow. I rarely carry the AD15. Um, I should carry it more. It's a cool knife. Uh, it is a bit, uh, you know, you have to, for me, or maybe it's just this one in particular, I do have to kind of flick it out or, or use some of the, uh, some of the, you know, release some of the spring tension and flip it out. I find that it's a difficult knife 
to kind of slowly roll out unless I um, get my hand out of the way. But what a cool knife. Beautiful knife. The 8010 is 110. Uh, the 8010. The 8010 for 110 is an awesome deal. Yes, 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 I would agree. And look at look at this handsome, look at this like nice family portrait. I like that. I'm gonna have to get one of those 2.5s now. The 8015 is 150 on Amazon as well. I mean, at 150, I'd say it's worth it. It's uh really, I, I would say it's probably one of Cold Steel's uh, you know, they have spent the most attention on it. It's a really great effort, um, S35VN, and we all know Cold Steel uh, really it has uh, the heat treat. The heat treat is strong with Cold Steel. They're good at the at the heat treat, and uh, so I mean, if they can make OS8 perform very well, you know they can make other steels perform very well. So I would say that 150 is definitely worth it for the 8015. I paid 190 4 months ago and it's still 190 everywhere else I've looked. It's not on Amazon now. That's because we've been talking about it in the, the last two where it were snatched up. <laughs> uh, I have a wife. Stabbing a foot would be way less painful than stabbing the cow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. I stabbed a large pillow by accident that uh and 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 like your wife maybe uh pillows throw pillows mean more to wives than they do to husbands and i dropped something very large i can't remember what it was but it was one of my fixed blades into this really nice throw pillow that we had um and it fell and it sunk in in slow motion it was just like and as the blade went in i could just kind of see you know how things slow down at those kind of moments i could just see the 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 cut just widen as the blade widened and it as it fell in but to that, uh, to that pillow's uh, men, um, credit, it hasn't gushed stuffing, and and she saw it once, and then I've kind of like just kind of turn it the other way. Ha! If the wife is not home, chose couch and blame the cat and dog. That's always good. Throw the dog under the bus. Feet are not meant to be stabbed. Trust me. Oof. Oh, John, I feel your pain. I prefer the eighty ten because. I'm a simp for the triad lock, but you can't go wrong with either. That is funny. I like that term simp. I, I just sort of learned what that meant not too long ago. Um, it's not my generation's word, but I like it. A simp, that's someone who's like uh, whipped, basically, right? Uh, that pillow did not spew blood, did it? It did not. Thankfully, it did not. It did not scream obscenities either. My couch has a little knife hole she doesn't know about. <laughs> I moved the couch around so she didn't see it. Yeah, that's, yeah, we've all done something like that. Why do they need, yeah, exactly, exactly. Our five-person couch fits three people. Uh, did you, uh, there's, um, oh, Jim Gaffigan has a funny bit where he talks about throw pillows. And, and he's like, it's not like people come to your house and say, oh, look at all those throw pillows. I didn't know they were doing so well. He's like, why do they, why are they so into the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they give them as gifts. I'm like, oh God, Christmas is coming. That means, that means we're going to have a whole bunch of new serving dishes that we're going to have to try and figure out where to put because uh, my wife has a bunch of aunts and they're all great, great women, but they all, uh, it's, I swear there's like maybe, maybe three serving dishes that the family possesses and they all re-gift them and they just kind of go in circles and the same with candles and pillows. It's like, we don't burn the candles. You know, we don't use the pillows. What's the point? Hi, simp equals short for simpleton. Oh, Hey JN. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the, um, definition. I thought it was kind of like, uh, uh, like you're like, like a, a simp for a woman. Uh, when I get cut, my wife glares at me. <laughs> You're like, but baby, it's a clean cut because I keep my knife sharp. I'll only be whining for a few days. Heaven forbid you don't notice a new one. <laughs> hey, baby, this is a great, great new. I love this throw pillow. Um, tonight, say yes. <laughs> That's how you could start it off is to compliment the throw pillow. Mm. All right. Well, it's looking like 
It's looking like a knife fight is on the way here. Recurve versus Warncliffe is what it'll be tonight. Oh my God, that's so true. Thought it was just, no, 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 it's not. It's not, uh, you know, you know, I was having this conversation with my wife. Sometimes we have some touchy conversations about, um, about, uh, you know, male, female issues. And, um, my wife has worked very hard in a male uh, dominated industry and she's uh, she has dominated herself uh, in that you know she herself has dominated in that industry and and it, it has not been easy for her and so she her her opinions are definitely uh, hard hard earned and uh, I respect them but sometimes we we nonetheless I I walk into that uh, into that bear trap and we'll talk about you know differences between the sexes and stuff. And one thing I, I did, I did come to the conclusion that it really is, is important. It could, you could see uh, that it would be really important for a business that really wants to make money and be successful to have a good amount of women and a good amount of men. I mean, I don't know if it's got to be an equal this or that, but women definitely are more detail oriented than than most men and most men have have their strengths too but to have uh you know to have women i've worked for women bosses almost my entire career uh maybe that's because i'm in a creative career or uh something like that but uh really that detail oriented organizational thing is is not a stereotype i believe it's real i think women's brains work that way uh <laughs> don't mind the throw pillows i'm allowing I'm allowed to use most of them. It's the hand towels. I'm not <laughs> hand towels. I'm not allowed to use. So yeah, I, I think having a having having diversity in the workplace is important uh, for for many reasons, but uh, probably the chief reason, especially uh, between the the sexes, is you want some really detailed oriented organized people uh, in your organization, right? I mean, doesn't that stand to reason? Um, anyway, that that was a. Uh, that that did not turn into an argument or a political discussion. So so that was good. Uh, th those never end well. Um, they they always take a lot of talking. It's like it's like uh, talking it out till daylight. You know. Uh, I'm glad that you're you're allowed to use the throw pillows and that you can relax on the couch on them. Um, but I I am not glad that you don't wash your hands much or that you have to use your jeans <laughs> to dry them off. I'm I'm assuming that was Jonathan that wrote that. Uh, funny. Uh, wait, there was one last. Uh, there was a, a a comment about Slicey's wife. I'd like to I'd like to see if you if you still have that, Jim. And then I think we might move on to a knife fight. Um, Recurve versus Warncliffe. Worst thing is when I come home and my wife says, <laughs> "What did I change?" Like I'm supposed to notice the pillows were changed. Your hair looks great, not my hair. Um, I love the the jeans are not new. What did I change? Uh, see what I mean? Women are more observant too. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Recurve versus Warncliffe. <coughs> Anyone feel like jumping on for two seconds to argue Recurve versus Warncliffe? So that I don't have to argue with myself uh, as I've been doing all, all evening. I'm making this camera shake. Uh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll give it a minute, and if uh, if someone feels like it, if not, it's Bob versus Bob. It's true. And look, I'm fueling up. <sighs> the little little tepid coffee. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Recurve versus Warncliffe. Let's see. I have. Oh, what do you know? I just so happen to have both right here. Let me see. So this is also an oldie but goodie. Extreme Recurve. This is from 1999. I got this sucker a long time ago. And then this is from this very same year, 2001. Orncliff versus Recurve. Okay. All right. I'll start first. Recurve. So this is a, a we're just uh, as a side note. Oh, excuse me. This is a serrated recurve, so I'm, I'm not going to touch on the serration issue. Okay. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for inviting me to this esteemed uh, for, um, 
uh, forum here. Uh, and I am here to argue in favor of the recurve knife. And I will give myself a minute. The recurve blade is a clearly superior blade, and I will map out why. It has everything to do with the curve, as one might imagine. Now, I'm going to use the straight line right here on this cutting board to show uh, how the curve and the shape of this profile, this blade profile, accelerates cutting without any extra effort by the user. Now, look, as you pull this through, the medium, we're going to use this fat white line as the thing that's being cut. And uh, this is a corner here. So I'm going to start my cut here. And as I pull it through, I'm just pulling straight back. Well, would you look at how deeply that cuts without even any arcing motion from my hand. If I add arcing motion from my hand or wrist, you can see you can see that this is cutting before the knife even gets there. How does that, how does that even work, you say? Well, it's through the magic of the recurve. Uh, that recurve is made so that it takes very, very little cutting action. And, uh, and as Shredder is saying, it does serious damage. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, that was a weak argument. But uh, since uh, you're a respected uh, person among us, I will not mention that as I, as I move forward and talk about why it is much better to use and have a, a worn cliff. Uh, being new to sharpening, I prefer the worn cliff. Recurve is a little more complicated for me to sharpen. Uh, showstopper, try something like the um, try something like a round ceramic rod or a triangular sharp maker ceramic rod. It, it, it makes it much easier to sharpen recurves than like a flat stone. Uh, God's figure says worn cliff guy myself, but recurve is still awesome. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So using, using the same analogy that, uh, that Mr. Recurve used, I'm going to show the power and the glory of the, uh, worn cliff blade using this same white, line in this same corner. It is true that if I just drag it straight across, it's like it does nothing. But I will note that that is not how the human body works. That is not how we cut things. We cut things using our body, and our bodies work on arcs. And when you use a worn cliff or a straight edge on an arc, you will see that there is no advantage to the recurve whatsoever. As a matter of fact, you have the tip leading the charge in this cut. And uh, uh, um, you have the tip leading the charge in this cut. And while it is cutting and slicing, it is also penetrating, uh, further accelerating the cut. This is the this is the rationale uh, used by um, uh, by by Michael Janich in creating the Yojimbo, and uh, he was assuming in making that that this flat cutting edge and that pointy tip was being used in an arcing motion, which is the realistic way of looking at it. When you use a recurve in that same uh, motion, yes, yes, you might catch some material right here in the recurve portion. But when you get to the tip, it shies away. It's uninterested by the time it gets to the tip. Here, it's most interested at the tip. Therefore, the Warncliffe is a superior blade to the recurve. Scene. What do you think? Tell me who won. I am not fond of recurves. Love Warncliffs. I love them both. I am inclusive of all blade shapes. I do love them both. I have, I have to say though, I have recently been, <laughs> I have $50 on Bob. I think he can finally win this one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I bet he loses says Rusty. Oh man. Uh, I, I have been on a Warncliffe kick lately. I gotta say your money's on Bob for the win. Thank you. This feels good. This feels like uh, guaranteed glory, Bob versus Bob. I hope you can pull off the win. It's true. You know, I haven't had a knife fight against myself in quite some time, and it uh, feels good to get back out there. Uh, it will be a draw. 
just like when you pulled the knife across that white line. You are drawing. Okay. Uh, you finished that one strong. Well, thank you. Thank you. I I, I kind of think the Warncliffe one. Um, you guys are all so generous. I love it. I'm not sure. I think Bob won. Ah, this is the seat. No, no matter how it ends, it ends well for me tonight. Look at this. What about this? What if I threw this in there? Pick call. God, look at this thing. I know, I know. It's got uh, very little utility. Uh, I mean, you know, you could use it for utility. Like you can, you know, open boxes with it. But this thing is just so inherently appealing with that, with that beautiful wrap. I love Bastinelli knives. Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, I think I'm pulling into the station. I think this is me saying uh, soon I, I'm going to be going to bed. I got a lot of knives sitting all around me. I got to put back in the case. That's always kind of an interesting thing after a podcast or after a uh, after a, a live. Uh, I know I know uh, Slicey knows about this. I'm sure he looks around him and he's like, I got it. OK, I got it. Got some knives to to clean up and put away lovingly in the case and lock up because if someone breaks in, they're going to know and they're going to go right to the knife case. Warren Cliff for sure even pulled out the Yojimbo reference. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did. Love that Yojimbo. I totally could have jumped on, but wanted to see Bob talk to himself for two straight minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next time, please jump on. It, it will really help. <laughs> Ah, uh, you're great, Bob. Thank you for always doing a great live stream every Thursday. Monster, it's my pleasure. Thank you for coming uh, and joining. Uh, good night, Scott. Great to have you. Thanks for all the comments, everybody, one and all. Fruit knife. Love the fruit knife. I love the fruit knife. Uh, and speaking of fruit knife, Alex has a GEC fruit knife that he might sell me. Thank you, Bob and Jim. I meant excellent. Thank you, Monster. And also always thank you, Jim. Chris, have a fine evening. And... Uh, you know, I, I want reports back on how that thing, um, how that undisclosed Bowie performs. A YouTube cheese cutter. Have a great night, tribe. <laughs> thank you, John. Have a have a wonderful evening. Dime says, "Thank you for the live, bro. It's always my pleasure." Dime, uh, dime wide, nickel high. That's a cool name. I like it. Monster, have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Monster. You have an awesome night, and uh, Slicey, you have a great night. And uh, uh, God figures, God's figure, have a great night. Always a great live stream. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, one and all, it's been a pleasure. Uh, coming up this week, uh, this weekend, don't forget, uh, we have a uh, uh, another awesome interview. Um, and uh, this week it's with Jared Von Otterloo, design master, who's designed knives for some of the, some of the greats and uh, is making knives himself. It's a great interview. And uh, and then check out what, what, what next Wednesday show is going to be. Thank you, Black Multicam. Always great to have you here, sir. Thank you. And uh, I'm not sure what the subject will be next Wednesday, but join us there. Blade Hobby, it's been fun. Thank you. Uh, yeah, show up more often. Love to have you. And uh, if you want, you can join and come right on. JN, have a good night, and thanks for the uh, simp uh, definition. It, it helps me to, when I talk with the kids. And, uh, well, it's been a pleasure, guys. Uh, thanks. Have a wonderful night. And for Jim, of course, working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying have a fine evening and definitely whatever you do, don't take dull for an answer, people.